Um, so Here we go. This the is pilot, how it all began. The most freakish pilot. Zim episode ever. It's not freakish. It's it just is, not. The rest it's not at all like uh, <laughs> the series ended up being. We is did. that John Gary? Yeah, that's John yeah. Gary who went yeah. on to do the mysterious mysteries announcer yeah. for the series. Uh, you know, there was I like the video. Well, we did these last minute. We were going to have a title sequence, but yeah. then we needed to do something very quickly to sort of explain the story. This is the pilot, so we had to explain basically why this should be a series. <laughs> so it's like basically this a colored animation. It's a animatic. commercial. It's basically a commercial for the studio to see if they want to pick up the show, which they did, and then regretted. This intro is the first thing I ever colored for the show. <laughs> but we got it made, so we laughed, you know, evilly, and... I never, I have to admit, I never thought that it would go past the, the pilot. Is I that thought, right? Yeah, I, well, I didn't think so. I wasn't planning on it. I thought I was going to make a little cartoon and then go back home and work on my comics, and it just didn't stop until little it did stopped you know. harder than we ever could have expected. Did Kevin do the music on this part? Kevin didn't do the music. He, uh, let's see, this was um, my friend Mark, who did the title theme. Oh, wait, the Zen theme doesn't get used in the pilot. No. Oh, there's your, do you like that music? Oh, this? Was this not Kevin? No, this isn't Kevin anymore. Mark this is a. Uh... No, Mark didn't do the music for the actual inside stuff here. For oh, the this was uh, Antoinette Spolin? No. Hey, who did do the voice for. Uh... Hmm? Uh, this is. A, so, so, you've always been Dib. Yes, I have. You I'm were. The Dib. second I heard your voice, I pretty much tried to get you to be Dib, and you did, and. And I've been thankful that, ever since. Well, I sound different in this room. You sound different because you're not you. Oh, I'm not? Who well, am I? You're Richard Horvitz. The voice for Zim here is Billy West, who uh, a lot of you would recognize from Ren and Stimpy as Stimpy or uh, Futurama from, as doing Fry's voice. Mm -hmm. and Quite an accomplished voiceover artist in his own right, wouldn't you say, Richard? Who's that? Um, Mr. West, Billy West. Adam West? Batman? <laughs> Richard was asked to come in later, though, and revoice this. Just this isn't him here, but he was asked to revoice it just as a tester. That's true. We went through a couple of different voices. We had the original person who laid down the first voice track that we animated to was Mark Hamill. That's oh, right. Luke it, Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, or the Joker from the Batman mm -hmm. animated series, and it didn't work out necessarily. You know, the sound of it just it it wasn't necessarily Zim. Then what? Then we went on to Billy West. Then what? Billy West. What do you think the, the main difference between Richard and Billy was? What did Richard bring to it that... Well, at the time, at the time, I mean, the, only, the only reason that we didn't go with Billy West was that his voice was a little too familiar at the time to me. I thought I, I associated him with another science fiction comedy show, which was Futurama. Translation, for those of you listening, that's, that's just financial. It's cost. Right? Oh, yeah. So I thought, who can I find? Who can I find that mm -hmm. just is mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. at all... <laughs> A well-received voice actor. Uh -huh. Someone who's just going to not remind anyone of anyone else, any other character, because they didn't leave an impression on right. the minds right. of the audience. So Andy was going to be Zim originally? <laughs> good save, good save. No, no, no but doing, honestly, what is... You were doing... Richard, you were doing Angry Beavers at the time. Yes, I was. And... When it finally came time to decide on a final Zim, Beavers we had a lot of trouble because, well, well, no, yeah. but uh, there were people at Nickelodeon that still associated you with Daggett, the, yes. the Daggett character from Angry Beavers, but I kept saying, but I love his voice. I love his voice. I love it. And there was a big, you know, deal, big to-do yes. about getting you to actually work on the show. Uh, do you remember what, what made it so that you actually ended up as Zim? Um, yeah, the Beavers had ended, so... Um, there was some time in between the pilot being done and the beavers being over that uh, I was brought back in and uh, you along with Mary decided to try to revoice this and see if we could sell the idea to Nick again but we pitched my voice up yeah yeah and uh, but I remember it took us a while to revoice that revoice it's always hard to to you know Lip sync somebody else's work, you know. Do you remember oh, yeah. that? You, very yeah. difficult. It's very difficult. Just because you might have read the line completely differently, yeah. but you have to use his at least the length, the exact right timing. because of his the mouth movements exactly. And Ricky doesn't have much to do no. in this episode, but I mean he's always been Gur. I went through about a thousand voice actors who were auditioning for Gur, 
And when people see crazy, you know, zany character or whatnot, they go. I loud. got. Uh, there were a lot of characters that were get, a lot of voice actors that were getting very broad, doing crazy little voices. <laughs> yeah, okay. And it it was dis. I'm I'm not into that. I'm not. I really wasn't into people doing crazy voices. I just like people who had voices that probably got them ridiculed in their day to day lives, but that would work well for for the show. So yes. Yes, it's like, I, when, I go, it's I like been, when I go to the drive-thru and, they, and I order like a, a hamburger and some fries and they said, would you like a Coke with that, ma'am? No, not at all like that, Richard. No. Richard. But uh, <laughs> I had known Ricky, I'd been working with Ricky for a while here and he was helping out with color on the show and Ricky just has a naturally just ridiculous voice to me. Um, go ahead, say true. something. It's very Ricky. true. It's, yeah. it's, he, he, he's, he's, oh, he's, no, he's a, he's a ridiculous man. But... Uh, okay. It's only because Jonan's uh, blind and stupid, but uh... it's so true. It's so true, except not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, it was it was actually kind of a a little bit of a process getting Ricky in on the show because I chose him to do the voice for Gur mainly because he had never done actual right? voice acting that for animation before. He's not like you guys who comes from like a voice acting uh, or an acting at all past. I thought if Gur's such a messed up little machine. I want him to sound not very slick. I, I, I want right. him to sound intentionally unprofessional. <laughs> yes, I guess that makes perfect sense. So, now so, we understand why you hired me. They only, so, they only agreed to me. I mean, because I did two auditions and they were both like the first one was okay, the second one was awful because I was I was tired. I'd been working on a comic project that nonstop was, right. for thirty six hours. I'd been awake. So they used the first audition, and from what I heard, Nickelodeon agreed just because they thought Gur was going to be a minor character. Yeah. yeah. And you know. I, I love the fact that it worked out that way because Gur's voice, 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 voice isn't like any other voice in, I think, in existence. <laughs> I would have to say that, you know, that was a good call on my part. Thank um, you, pat on the back. Um, much, Melissa? Melissa, yeah, Melissa, Melissa came in. She was just first choice for Gaz and has been She just great. naturally sounds like a little girl. Yeah, she just sounds like yeah. a little girl, which is maybe creepy, but... You don't really have to do much to her voice, do you? We don't pitch her voice very much. Sometimes we pitch it up, but... Um, what was your budget on this first episode? Oh, God, like 30 bucks. Right, and then <laughs> 30, what did it, what Well, did it 30 come, bucks and whatever it, Ricky had in his backpack at the time, because he was living yeah. out of his backpack. And whatever have was a backpack. left in his belly button. Did this mm. episode... I'm sorry. Did this episode... Uh, this was probably the smallest crew for anything Zim related. This was just Jordan Rychek and myself in terms of the storyboard. And I think it shows. <laughs> but who, was, who was the colorist? On my part, anyhow. Was it Andrew, was his name, the colorist on, on the... Andrew... Blah, 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 blah. I don't remember his last name. We should probably refrain from <laughs> <thing. laughs> referencing people. <laughs> it's <camp>. Andrew... <laughs> <laughs> I only colored the intro. So now this... A yeah, lot you, only, of, you only did color on the very, like, the, the couple of slides at the very beginning. Yeah. A, a lot of the, uh, the scenes ended up in uh, Nightmare Begins. But now, did you miss this little scene? jokes and stuff jokes. like that. No, I didn't like the food fight thing. I like that it gets out of hand, but I thought it was a little bit too this much like a little kid's kind it's of It's a little too grounded for you. It's a little, well, no, it's just too, it's like a, this is too kid, too, too much like a little, little, yeah. little kid's show. The jokes are just sort of, I don't know, juvenile. And I'm, I'm a more sophisticated kind of person. Sure. You know? like, yeah, you play oh, video games. I, I'm beyond this stuff. <laughs> I just was always amazed when we went to series that the, the animation and the graphics could have been... In, were feature quality for you know the good first half of the thing. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the way that the show was done here was a lot simpler than the series ended up being. Yeah. But I think it works pretty nicely for for this particular story. For its I mean, purpose. It's yeah. not big. It's not trying to show off or anything but like that. But you did make a big deal out of Jordan. Jordan had come from like uh, Ren and Stimpy and stuff like that, so he was really into just really snappy timing. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff like this that. I know. You made a big deal out of using real sound effects, though, like natural sound effects. Yeah, I wanted everything to sound sound pretty intense. And not cartoon sound effects. No, no, I'm not. You mean like a kind of like Hanna Barbera sort of b bouncing and boinging sounds? Yeah. No. I just not always, that. I've just always loved that Dibs technology is as advanced as Earth in technology. Well, because well. that's why we gave him Professor Membrane as a dad because right. he has access to right. all, this, all this equipment, all this technology. Planet to land on, Sam. Wait a minute. What planet is this? Earth. 
I hate that line about burritos. I don't know who wrote that. Probably not me, but... I'm not crazy about the way it was delivered, either. I could have done, oh, yeah. could have done it better if I had tried harder. Are you, are you insulting Billy West? No. Billy West did a... He's your friend, Bill. man. He, he, had, a friend he had a hard time doing the timing to, to uh, Mark Hamill's dialogue. To Mark dialogue. Hamill's timing, exactly. I mean, the ADR stuff like that is just punishment, and he had to do an entire episode, which you had to do. Or did yeah. you just do a section? No, I did the whole episode. Oh, yeah. See... Fart sound effects and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not uh, all that. Not didn't make it into the final series. Yeah. Except for I think with mm -hmm. Willie, in a voting of the doom. Oh yeah. Yeah, Willie has some, Willie's <laughs> some intestinal problems. I think. <laughs> but, but, but you know what? In that episode, we had figured that okay, the series was coming to an end. We had. We had refrained from using those sound effects. You began with farts. So Lucille Bliss. We thought we'd use them all up in that yeah. those few seconds. Lucille Bliss, who. Yeah, Lucille Bliss did. Uh, yeah. You'd kind of come full circle by, that, yeah, by yeah. that point, right? It was With complete the after that. It was complete. So the only thing missing from this is Richard's voice. And I think it's noticeably missing, don't you? No. No. What? Oh, oh I mean, yes, well, yes. What? You huh? can see. I drew, oh, I drew this. I drew this oh. and was very happy about it. What? It took forever. I actually did those all by hand. It wasn't any kind of cut and paste or anything. Really? And that, uh, this is... I always love that. This is probably her. the most boarding I ever did because it was basically just a couple of people doing it. <laughs> After that point on the series, how many I times did you write? Really, Zim is not an alien. I did it about a thousand Zim's high tech spaceship there, huh? <laughs> yeah, different boot cruiser than than ended up in the series. I don't even think it was called a boot. It cruiser. was just a flying saucer. Wow, you know what? that sounds like again. I think that uh, I think it was actually called the Spoot Cruiser. You were supposed to have two ships but, originally. But as I found out, uh, Spoot beavers. was a word that was used a lot in Angry Beavers. That's correct. Oh, Spoot. Well, that's yeah. spooting, yeah. Makes no sense. I don't know no. what you're talking about. 